Even astronauts need a place to stay before they rocket into space. The crews of the space shuttle launching from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, that place was the astronaut crew quarters, a set of bedrooms, offices, and facilities built into the center's operations and checkout building. Resembling a college dorm, the crew quarters doesn't scream technology in space as much as it whispers comfort and familiarity. And that's the idea. Give the astronauts a place to relax, eat, and sleep before they go to work in space on missions that will mark some of the most taxing times in their lives. My first impression when I arrived was, wow, I'm in astronaut crew quarters. I mean, you walk in, it was before it had been remodeled uh, on my first flight, and these are the rooms that the Apollo astronauts stayed in. There's nothing fancy about it. You know, it's not going to the Ritz-Carlton. It, it wasn't even a, you know, a Motel 6, it, but it was astronaut crew quarters, and that was, uh, that was really special. Jim and the astronauts were the first to stay in the crew quarters. All the Apollo astronauts slept here before going to the moon. The facility grew when the space shuttles began taking more and more people into space at a time. The aura of crew quarters grew with each landing and each new spaceflight achievement, even among the astronauts. A couple of the rooms were seen publicly on launch day, but most of it remained a mystery until the shuttle's retirement. Kennedy Space Center director Bob Cabana, a former astronaut who spent many nights in crew quarters preparing for his missions or helping others get ready for theirs, showed off some of the lesser known areas of the facility along with the spots that are familiar to space program enthusiasts. The, uh, the dining room, what you guys probably remember seeing all the time, is you know, the crew sitting at the table. And they're all smiling and everybody's you know, up and ready for launch and they're in their crew shirts. And uh, you know, they take general shots at everybody and then they move off. And then the crew actually sits down and, and eats. The cooks at crew quarters have to accommodate a range of tastes keeping in mind that astronauts are often concerned about how their stomachs will behave once they get into weightlessness. Uh, I'll never forget my first flight. We're sitting around the table, and uh, one of my crew members, who uh, is, it's his first flight, and after the cameras all left, he's got steak and eggs and hash browns and coffee, and he's pouring hot sauce on, and uh, my commander looks over and he says, ah, going for color and distance, I see. Like the rest of the facilities and crew quarters, the bedrooms are not extravagant, but they work. It's a very small room. You got a desk, a bed, and a, and a shower, and a, a toilet in the, uh, in the bathroom. Very sparse, but uh, very functional. It's very quiet. Uh, it's an elevated uh, floor back here with sound insulation underneath, sound insulation up above, and so crews that are on weird schedules can actually come in here and, uh, and get some sleep. But a quiet room doesn't always do the trick when a launch is waiting the next day. It's not anxious, it's just you want to get off and do it. And in fact, one of the hardest things, some folks really like coming down to crew quarters and, and just relaxing a little bit before they fly. And I came down and it was like, ah, I want to launch. We're, we're here, let's launch tomorrow. You know, but you're, you can't do that right away. A new conference room was built to accommodate the larger crews of the shuttle and International Space Station, including foreign crew members. This is where they go over all the flight data file, uh, get any changes, updates. They get the weather brief on the screens here. Uh, it's a place to come and relax. We have simulators that uh, simulate uh, robotic arm operations for both uh, shuttle and station, as well as a simulator that ex lets you actually uh, land the, uh, the space shuttle and it's a pretty good simulation. Space is a lousy place to get sick, so specially trained doctors and nurses along with exam rooms are on hand to make sure everyone stays well before heading into orbit. Pre and post launch, uh, there are examinations that have to be done. You gotta see the doc, you know, if anybody got sick while they were in crew quarters, they'd go see the flight doc uh, and just make sure it's those last minute checks that everything's okay and it's just a, uh, they're standard small exam rooms and a, a private place to meet with the doctor when you're here. A staff is on hand to take care of all the aspects of an astronaut crew's day, from housekeeping to scheduling. The people down here are family. Uh, they really get to know you. The folks that run crew quarters, that keep it clean, that cook for you. Uh, I mean, there are friends that I've made for life and have bonded with from my time down here. As much as the crew quarters is set up to mirror everyday life, 
There are rooms that are meant solely for the unique demands of going into space. All right, and of course you guys have seen this on, uh, on TV hundreds of times. This is the uh, suit room where the crew gets suited up to uh, actually go fly in space. Uh, you're tight with the, uh, the suit techs that are working with you, and it's that last, you know, hey, we're getting ready to go fly in space. This is really, uh, it's a big deal. It's kind of neat. There's also a launch day tradition that plays out in this room. Probably the, the biggest tradition is the uh, game uh, Fargo Possum, and Fargo Possum is low-handed poker. And the rule is you can't leave crew quarters and, uh, and go to launch until the commander wins the hand, has the lowest hand, and that sometimes takes a while. All right, we can fly! <laughs> now suited for space and following several days at crew quarters, the astronauts get to take a walk through the corridor to the elevator that will take them to the waiting astrovan and out to the launch pad. Cabana served as the Flight Operations Director during a number of shuttle missions, watching over the astronauts as they prepared to head into orbit. His advice to flyers was pretty simple. Let it sink in. Mostly what I tell first-time flyers is, uh, when you get ready uh, and you're up in space and you have a free minute, uh, make a memory. Stick your nose up to a window and make a memory because uh, the eyes God gave you are so much better than any camera. And when you look at a camera picture when you get home, you're disappointed. It's just not as vibrant, it's not as real as it is when you just look out the window and make a memory. 